TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like and a comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, if we do go live and you miss it, man, this is twitch.com. This is my username right there. You can fast forward, rewind, play your lives back, do what you feel, man. Don't forget, we do got merch. You get me. And we also got the uh, Patreon, man. Monday through Friday, this is a light list of everything we got. We about to start two new shows, Gangs of London. And we're currently voting on another show. I think maybe Skins might win. Because it's looking like real skinsy. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, the link to all of this is down in the description below. This is Police Interceptors. I don't think I've seen this. We'll see. Yeah, there's someone with a big knife, they've got a sword, and I think it's a machete. If you're a firearms cop, armed bad guys, and life threatening. See, this fits Lisa. I understand why she don't be doing that. You be toting that fire. You know what I'm saying? I get it now, Lisa. You're better than just riding in the car. You want to shoot something. Gotcha. Situations go with the territory. You know exactly as I say. Yes. Yeah. 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 Who's got a knife in here? But they've the equipment and the training. Safety up. To cope with anything that's thrown at them. Here is up! On the floor! And an increasingly used tool in their kit bag. Put your hands on that railing now. Put your hands on the, the railing. It's the taser. Put your hands on the railing now. On the railing. Put your hands on the railing. Get your hands on the railing. Do as you're told. I think the taser is very effective because for the armed police inside of things, it's um, a less lethal option that we have. It gives us the chance to maintain distance from someone. So a lot of the times, just having it there and people seeing the bright yellow is enough as a, of a deterrent in itself. Um, and then pointing it at someone is enough to actually de-escalate and bring the situation to a resolve. Have I seen this episode? So it's very rarely fired. I don't think so. But that rare occasion may just be tonight. I hope Lisa fire it. <laughs> the, uh, the caller said the person attacked him was just left a voicemail saying he's going to stab the caller and was making threats to attend that male's address uh, with a knife. The police have received a chilling call about a bloke suspected of making his way to another man's house armed with a knife. No, I don't think I've seen this. Firearms heavyweights Jim Campin and Dan Machin are racing to the address. All of the UK came to Lisa's rescue on my reaction. I just don't, like, what's going on? Y'all love Lisa. I did with the last one that I was talking about him. The 40,000 views. 10,000 of y'all was <laughs> holding it down for Lisa. Well, I'm here to tell you. It doesn't matter how much you hold it down for Lisa. I'm here. It seems the two men were involved ridicule. in a fight earlier. Clearly two people have fallen out. Um, lots of mentions of knives. Just for him say, taser has been authorised, should have been needed. Dan's been awarded three bravery commendations and is highly trained in firearms, taser and in close protection. Basically, if the situation gets sticky, he's the bloke you want by your side. Just further from 5-6, we are some way away. Is anyone uh, close to traveling as well? Jim and Dan are a few miles out. The dogman Mark Haywood has spotted the suspect in his car and tried to pull him over. He's ignored the blues and makes off. Just approaching Town Hall and the lights are still out. Lights are on red, so I'm by. Straight through red. Them bike, not the, first. the driver's gone lights out and heads over into the cycle lane. Fortunately, there's no one on a 2 a.m. bike ride. The suspect now floors it. Still on the road, 8 
The ambulance might as well follow. They think the man could be armed with a knife. So the interceptors need to be prepared should they confront him. But the suspect seems desperate to avoid a meeting. We are Radford Bridge Road. Radford Bridge Road is a dead end. Hey, she's got a car going up Beachdale. It's a dead end in the alleyway at the bottom. Yeah, we're heading out. Better slow down. Jim and Dan are closing in from the other side. But it looks like this potentially armed suspect is preparing for a decamp. Mark moves to block him in, but he's off down an underpass, heading straight for Jim and Dan at the other end. He's not even fast. He got out this mud running like Humpty Dumpty. Like, what's this? But he's off down an underpass, heading straight for... Then he got on sandals? Like, you was not prepared for your night. Jim and Dan at the other end. We're at that underpass. They spot the suspect approaching fast. There he is. And the knife is in his hand. Stay where you are! Stay where you are! Stay where you are now! Stay where you are! Interceptors are after a man who's... We don't need a recap. I'm so sorry. Let's just get negative. Underpass. Who are ready to pounce. There he is. The suspect has a knife, so Dan's drawn his taser. I will give it to y'all, though. Let this have been America, buddy would have been down and out. They would have been planning his <laughs> his funeral. Stay where you are! Don't stay where you are now! Stay where you are! Go where you hold it! Taser, taser, taser! Get on the floor! Taser, Get taser, the floor. taser! He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. Drop him, little. 50,000 volts has dropped him like a stone. Right, relax. Put your Bro, sleep. Was he snoring? Was that a snore I heard? 50,000 volts has dropped him like a stone. Right, relax. That's a snore. Relax. Put your hands behind your back now. Put your... He can't, officer. He is asleep. Put your hands behind your back now. He's going straight into cuffs. <clears throat> Put your hands behind your back. Mel Tazard is in possession of a knife. Is he cool? <sighs> no longer a threat, concerns turn to his well-being. Knees up. Listen, calm yourself down now. Step Just take... Buddy, you gotta put... Y'all had that man in a chokehold. Y'all had 50,000 volts going through him. It's over. He's asleep. Y'all ain't hear him snoring? I heard it. I know y'all heard it. Some yeah. breaths, mate. Take some breaths. <sighs> sit you up, mate. Okay. Here we go. <sighs> Mate, I'm looking for injuries about your person, okay? He seems to be intact. And so does Jim. All thanks to his partner's quick reactions and sharpshooting. Yep. Stay where you are! Don't stay where you are! Don't stay where you are now! Stay where you are! The bloke's clearly armed with a blade and heading straight for Jim. Go where you hold it! Leaving Dan no option but to shock him into submission. Taser, taser, taser! taser. Ah. He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. Drop him, little. Yeah, he would have been down and out. He would have been down bad. I'm talking carried by 12. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, in America, that would not have went that way. But that's a, that's good policing. Can't even hold you. In the heat of the moment, the suspect has thrown the blade. But it doesn't take long to locate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's not far away. So you've got one, Jim? Yeah. Little kitchen knife. It might be little. It's not a kitchen knife. That's somebody. That's a kitchen knife. But with 275 murders involving a knife or sharp instrument recorded in England and Wales last year, Dan was wise to act fast and stop him in his tracks. And it's not the only blade in his possession. Oh, there's another. Oh, okay. It is a kitchen knife. It's like my mum's It's what? My mum's kitchen knife. Your mum's kitchen knife. So you live with your mom too. You grown you grown to the point where you ain't got no hair on the top of your head. His mum's kitchen knife belongs in her kitchen, not in his pocket. The slurry bloke also stinks of booze. I do not. Have you been drinking, mate? Yeah, of course so. Yeah? Okay, shall we get in a police car? 
We've got to do things now the right way. Mate, you can suck your teeth and disrespect me all you like. No, mate, sucking your teeth. It's Shut about as mouth. childish as it comes, mate. The suspect's going to have to stop sucking and start blowing. Uh, you're gonna Yo, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about off uh, a narrator? You really living life on the edge at this point. Flies the cake. No? Okay, I require you to provide a sample of breath for analysis. Big deep, like listen one. to me. Big deep breath. I like that one. I don't want to do it. You don't want to? Okay. Uh, that don't like you, man. Like you don't like me. Okay, I've got you know what I'm telling you, fam. It's another person you know against you. I'm telling you, mate. Personal issues or no personal issues. Listen to what I'm saying. Bros are class A's. Are you no. too He's looking into the officer's soul. Boss Part of sample man. of breath. Boss man. Boss man. Do you want to provide a sample not of breath? Stupid mate. I don't know. Yeah? That's why I'm asking you. Do you want to provide a sample of breath for analysis? No, I don't. Okay, that's refusing then. You're further arrested for failing to provide a sample no, no, of breath. No, no, come on, come on. Bring it. Oh, you want to? The charmers had a change of heart. Bring it, bring it, bring Last it. chance. Big deep, deep breath. breath. Keep going, keep and the going, verdict's keep in. We're on 89. Legal limit is 35. So that's almost two and a half times the legal limit. You should have just went ahead and that blue. Pause. Looking at the state of his car, his blood alcohol levels could still be rising. Y'all really be drinking Smirnoff out there, huh? That's like the third bottle of Smirnoff I done seen. Like, that's crazy. Smirnoff was the first alcohol that I drank ever in life. Never doing it again. The suspect's off to blow on the evidential breath machine at the station. And any time the taser is discharged, the interceptors need to carefully gather their own evidence. So we're just recovering the taser bits and pieces. Um, this is now all part of evidence. And if there's any repercussions or anything that comes if he suddenly collapses and dies, then obviously this is part of the evidence that might go towards that investigation. But it's a matter of course, we just have to do it. Once bagged, the dynamic duo have time to reflect on their shocking drama. The first taser's not really had a massive effect on him, has it? Taser, 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 taser! I thought he missed the first one. He's got a knife on him. He's got a knife. Drop him, Luke. That's when I got him in a headlock and you've tasered him again. But the taser's done its job and no one's been seriously hurt. Jim's not seen the knife and he's running straight towards Jim. Um, so he's been tasered. Uh, Jim's grabbed hold of him anyway. Uh, he's been he's still struggling around, so he's been tasered again. I thought he was still in possession of the knife whilst Jim's... He's off class A, so that's why he didn't feel like the first Struggling with him. <laughs> uh, got a bit of concern Jim might get uh, get stabbed us or something and come off worse. Uh, so he's been tasered. And we do loads of training, but you can never train for the real thing when you've got someone running towards you in possession of a knife. Um, wide open eyes, clearly intent on getting past you, still in possession of the knife. Uh, you think back, he, he should have shattered knife, should have told Jim about the knife. But in the heat of the moment, you know, day of the races, you can't, you can't. Y'all did the right thing, man. No loss of life, y'all did. Um, it's ended well. Jim's got no holes in him. And, uh... W police uh, 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 execution of job because in America, that would have been, they're taught to shoot to K-I-L-L. -L. We've got one in our custody. So it's, um, it's a good, good result. Yeah, good result. The suspect blew an even- Look how bro is walking. Bro didn't have no kneecaps. Look, look. <laughs> This is femur touching calf muscle bone, like no knees, look at this. The suspect blew an even higher reading of 116 at custody. For drink driving, dangerous driving, and possession of an offensive weapon, he got a 10 month prison sentence suspended for a year. He got a, t he got 10 months in a, in a pro wait, say it again? Offensive weapon, he got a 10 month prison sentence suspended for a year. What does that mean?
back towards us now. There's been a spate of quad and motorbike incidents in Nottinghamshire. With anti -social... The fact that you can do that is still crazy to me. That you can put a spike strip out on a motorcycle is... Social riders tearing up the streets. People are still playing the stop. And these nimble but potentially dangerous vehicles cause the interceptors a headache. They can get away around fields, they can get in areas that we can't. You think about the size of it. Yeah, the size, the land. Speed. A lot of them have been riding motorbikes and quads all their lives as well, so in terms of skill set, there's a lot of them that. Um, They'll take more risk as well on it, on the quad, um, to get away, which makes it even more dangerous for us in terms of obviously uh, trying to, to police it. And when they come in numbers, the chaos only multiplies. A biker gang from Coventry has travelled the 50 miles up to Nottingham, bringing them onto the interceptor's patch. This is almost legal in Florida. Like, the police not coming out for this. Like, because the, the, in America, like, at least in Florida, like, there's an understanding of bike life. And the bikers understand that the police will do their job. So they just keep it, like, you know, the whole, like, everybody, the commute from the community members to the bikers to the police, they're all on one page about this. So it's, it's not even this serious in Florida. There's around 25 motorbikes and a couple of quads riding on the wrong side of the road, nearly knocking over pedestrians. See, that's what doesn't happen. For, that doesn't happen here. They stay in the street. They do what bikers do. They block off the intersection. They let all the black. That's that's. It is what it is. This is. <laughs> and putting lives at risk. They might not be. So what I'm trying to say is that bikers here ride responsibly through traffic. The Hell's Angels, but this band of bikers are proving devilishly hard to catch on the ground. A traffic unit is behind one, but the biker presses home his advantage and mounts the pavement. The off-roader soon gives them the slip down a narrow path. Bikes have advantages over bigger, heavier cop cars, but not when it comes to their fuel tanks. The entire gang descends on a service station. It's a chance to apprehend a couple of them. N-Pass guides a marked unit in. But as cops leap out, the gang scatters in all directions. Not even turning a bike off. <laughs> not saying that there aren't overzealous cops in the, around that just will do it anyway, especially in Chicago. Chicago, they got a pretty decent understanding as well, but not as much as Florida. Uh, but yeah, they, they'll 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 give you they'll try you in Chicago. But you can't chase a biker on, in Chicago. So they're now traveling at speed the wrong way around a major junction. It's only a matter of time before someone is seriously hurt. And their driving is becoming more reckless by the minute. That's the thing, man. That's the thing. That's why you don't chase bikes. Because they're willing to do whatever to get away. It doesn't matter. They're not even thinking like that. They, I'm on two wheels, catch me if you can type situation. I know. I have a CBR 1000 RR. I know. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. It's going to take a team effort to get them stopped, and interceptor units across the county, including Jen Else, are closing in. Where is Lisa? What exactly have they done? But the gang are leaving the city to escape to the country. I'm pretty curious. I don't think they did anything until the police start chasing them. 
and it doesn't look like they've come for a picnic. Having torn up the city streets, they're now ploughing up the farmers' crops. With the bikers gathered in a field, the cops hatch a plan to cut them down by surrounding the perimeter. As darkness falls, Jen arrives on scene and gets an update from Lisa DeSantis. Plan is, we're hoping that we'll kind of make them try and get out and yeah. ultimately into the path of stingers. Yeah. The plan is to push the gang towards the main exit to the field, where they'll be greeted by a set of tyre-ripping teeth. Yeah. We're hoping they're going to go that way. There's loads of stingers and cops down there. Specialist dog handler Jen's got her own set of mobile gnashes in the car in the form of quantum. Right. The perfect sheepdog to herd this dodgy flock from the field. Literally been going around Nottingham City Centre causing absolute bedlam. Lisa, you, you were so quiet, I didn't even notice you until the last second. Go back. Literally good right. The perfect sheepdog to herd this dodgy flock from the field. Literally good being going around Nottingham City Centre causing absolute bedlam. Lisa, Lisa got at least two sentences every episode. Into the field. Oh, yeah. Just also uh, narrow their vision down. I think they've been looking at ways to get out, um, but they're very limited because we're everywhere. We're going to hopefully flush them towards the stingers, but they're literally just on... Uh, she can hold a little segment this evening. Pull a dog officer and then you'll spring round on top of them. Um, so where dogs go in, follow them. The I feel like Lisa is like, like that one kid who shows up to every event so they get the participation medal. She gets participation awards. You feel it? First sign of quantum, the gang saddles up. The plan seems to be working. The bikes are herded towards the stingers. I mean, if you say so, that ain't towards it. Man. But the fleeing flock spots the spikes and takes flight. They spotted a gap in the hedgerow and managed to squeeze through. They might have slipped the net for now, but they can't escape the eye in the sky. They're, uh, they're stuck in the field. Uh, At this point, if I was with them, I I would leave. They're following the group, not individuals. I break off and go home. I'll figure it out myself. I'd rather get jammed up alone than with a bunch of y'all and then be in one cell together. Like, like okay. Trying to find a way out. As the gang struggle to exit the maze of fields, Lisa and Jen find something they've left behind. What? An ID? Nice. Somebody ran out of gas, left their whole bike. Is this true? Two people. Oh, they've left a bag as well. ZRFs. Petrol can. But there's no rest for the team as NPAS update the gang's location. The main group are going to come out on the narrow lane new road. That's down there, in they're coming the, out on uh, there. next couple of seconds and head down towards the uh, M1 full bridge. The gang are heading back in there. Their direction and it's a race to intercept. Down to 2-2, we're back in the car heading towards it. They're, uh, they're going across the field. It's a long little segment. Jen arrives at Carp Forest, hoping to land herself a prize catch. And H, we're going to stay at that bridge in case they come back here. The lead quad is heading straight for her. Stay where you are, mate. Stay where you are. You should have heard or something. Of course he's going to turn around. What do you thought? They've retreated back into the woods. 
There's no way out and the rider has no choice but to dump his quad, which is swiftly recovered. Cops have also picked off three likely lads nearby. On that. Paul Charlesworth and Rich Elliott join proceedings and find more dumped vehicles in the forest. Bro, these gotta be stolen. To be dumping these, like they don't even care, they gotta be stolen. We must have recovered what, four or five bikes? Like if this was my bike, I'm staying with my bike. And I'll just take whatever, whatever, whatever come with it. Or, you know what? Or I could just get away and be like, report it stolen. And then go pick it up. You know what? No, they think it's smart. <laughs> Thanks. If not a couple more, uh, we've got a couple arrested. With something like this, they, they just cause havoc for everyone else. So, chances if you get more, it's slim. But the more we inconvenience them and put them out. Like, the literally, you could be riding a motorcycle, but minding your own business. Not doing nothing. And a police cabal you. It's because they they chased some motorcycles twenty minutes earlier. Now you involved like better more would cost them. So they've had their fun and now they've lost probably five or six bikes. A couple of them arrested. One of them's crying his eyes out because he's been arrested. Um, Stay home. Idiot, so I'm happy with it. It's as good as you can ask for, really. It's a miracle no one was injured in the incident and the interceptors managed to see six bikes and one quad. No one claimed them and they were subsequently crushed. However, due to insufficient evidence, no further action was taken against the three arrested men. Did all that crying for nothing. Still to come. But y'all see what I'm talking about, right? Lisa had like four or five sentences. She, she read a paragraph and never to be seen again in the scene. It's not me, it's what I'm witnessing. I don't know if they make it, it they be making Lisa look terrible in this show. Y'all gotta talk to the producers, don't get mad at me. <laughs> I've never seen Lisa do anything. I like, never. We've seen everybody else do something, but Lisa, she come on, get her four lines and be gone. This is proof. Show me an episode where she did something and I'll watch it. I'm not saying she, could, like, it ain't her fault. It's their fault. The producers did it. The latest annual figures estimate <coughs> 280 people were killed in accidents on Great Britain's roads by drivers under the influence. 51 men drove to drink driving it. Chancing it after a few sherbets is a risk you'll live to regret if you're lucky. Sure they're not. Surely yes. I've had two vodka lemonades. Drink driving is a nightmare for anybody yeah. that's on the road. I already knew it was her. We know, I know Lisa's voice. At this point, I think I'm a fan of Lisa. Lisa, I'm a fan of the work ethic. I am a general fan of what you do on a daily basis on this show. You come in, you get about a good five minutes of speaking screen time and then the rest you ain't you chilling look hand underneath the vest comfortable not even driving today it's whilst somebody's driving whilst under the influence of alcohol and i think personally a lot of the time people do it because they can't be bothered to arrange alternative um transport to get home and i think sometimes people think oh i'll just risk it i'll risk it i'll have a few but then when you're out with your mates, you have a few more, and then before you know it, you're in a world of drunkness, and you still think you're all right to drive home. Great ex, great, great, great speaking role, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Because I got millions of much, much needed clarification after that. It's Monday evening, and Sergeant... You see what I'm saying? Where's Lisa? What happened? Jim Carrington and Lewis Marshall are after a dodgy driver. We're travelling down towards, back into Nottingham from up north, in company with some other ARVs and a couple of other T-Pack call signs from the TSG. Um, there's a motor down here that's been pinged with a lad in it. 
literally the producer was like, "Okay, Lisa, tell us a little about a, a little bit about what you think the process is with a drunk driver. Put yourself in their shoes and tell us what you think is happening." Action. She speaks. She speaks. All right. All right. Cut. Enough. Let's do this in post production. Let this be in here, and then let's move along to somebody. <laughs> That's what they be doing to Lisa. Don't do that to Lisa. Been done for for dangerous driving. He's currently disqualified, and the suggestion is he's probably in the pub drinking. Um, and might get back and be on the wheel of this car. The team are out in force. The controller has put preemptive tactics on it uh, to preempt any kind of pursuit. Um, so all the T pack call signs are travelling that way along with our dog handler Jen. Paul, we're going to sit the other side, mate. Um, out of view, so we're just short of the RA. I'm happy here. Are you happy here? Yeah. Well happy. Happy hour starts here as Jim and Lewis play the waiting game. While at the pub, Lisa and Paul, in and unmarked, have eyes on the suspect's car. There's someone in the driver's seat of our subject vehicle calling to Lisa and Paul. So stand by, stand by. It looks like the okay, Lisa. This this is at this point we're not even here for the driver. We're not even here for the drunk dude. We're here to see what Lisa's role is and all of this. Disqualified driver is driving. Right, right, right. Lisa has the suspect car in her sights up ahead. We're with you now. Right. They're ready if the bloke makes off, but he's pulled over. Box on, box on. A passenger is first out of the car. That's all right, it's all right. Can I get a yeah? Cool, cool. Keys. Next out from the passenger's side is the driver's two young kids as Jim gets down to business. They're going to cuss them out. You got kids in the car and everything. You wilding. I'm just going to put you in handcuffs to make sure you're not going to escape, mate. All right. Are oh, you disqualified? He denies being disqualified, but Jim's got laptop backup. According to the, the police national computer, you are still shown disqualified until you pass an extended driving test. Have you passed an extended driving test yet? No. So you will almost certainly still be disqualified from driving, mate. Despite being banned... We can deal with it here, mate, all right? Thank you, mate. He's seen fit to drive his young family from the pub. But you'll end up, we'll end up seizing the car because you're disqualified and not insured. And there's something far more worrying on the wind. Have you had a drink at all tonight, mate? Yeah, I've had one. I've had one. OK, mate. We'll just breathalyse and make sure you're not over the drink drive limit, either. The bloke reckons the smell of booze is from a spillage on his top. Oh, you got some beer thrown on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, it might be that, mate. I can smell a bit, but yeah. not massive amounts. That's what you can smell. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has admitted to having one pint at the pub. Right, mate, it's a steady blow. He finna fail the hell out of this. When you answer like, yeah, 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 you drunk. Because you don't even know you put that many years on the situation. Go into the machine for me, nice and steady. Keep going, 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 keep going. That's it. We'll see what it says. One beer and some beer thrown on your top and you'll be sound. So we'll see what it says. Oh. Oh. you talking about oh? Dear. It's red, mate. It's 52. You failed it. Um. 52, man. That's two drinks. You have two drinks within one hour. It's over. So, the bad news is, he's going to have to rest you on the suspicion of being over the drink driving room, mate. All right, and we'll take you into the nick and put you on the big machine down there, and hopefully you'll not blow over the limit down there. If you have only had one beer, mate... Yeah, I've only had one. I'd be surprised, if I'm honest, to blow 52 on one beer. I was going to have only one beer. What do you have, an IPA? <laughs> Maybe he accidentally spilled some more beer down his neck. Thank you. Yeah, um, unbelievably, he's got... What I'm assuming is his young child in the car and his other half, and he's just blown over the drink drive limit. So not only is he disqualified and uninsured, he's also getting behind the wheel of the car when he's had some alcohol. With his kid, though. We're it's good. one thing to put your own life in danger, but your kids, like, they don't know no better. We get cracking, uh, guys and girls. We'll see you down there. 
It turns out the bloke's also been convicted of a drink driving offence in the last five years. So it's a familiar room for him. I require you to provide two specimens of the breath for analysis by means of an approved device. This specimen with the lowest proportion of alcohol may be used as evidence and the other will be disregarded. So yeah. deep breath in and then a breath into the machine, mate, when you're ready. Yeah. Regarded. So yeah. deep... Bro, what is up with this guy, bro? I peeped it in the earlier one when he did the breathalyzer. He put almost the whole little white tube in his mouth to blow. Now he got both hands wrapped around this thing. Breath in and then a breath. And look how far he look look at this. Breath into the machine, mate, when you're ready. The, this little red piece is where you put blow at. Look at where his mouth is. Yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep oh, going. Okay. It's still a little too deep, Paul. And keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's stopped, mate. It's just a boy, mate, because you just stopped. You get you get you get another couple of chances, mate, but bear with me. Attempt two. Have another go, mate. Just deep breath in and then steady into the machine. Steady, steady. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. It just stopped, mate. It's because you're hesitating, mate. It's a really yeah, sensitive. I'm, I'm just blowing there, Paul. I'm just blowing. Mate, it's just. I don't understand how much breath they need. Like, I don't have that much breath in my body in one take. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that. Sensitive machine. It knows when you're hesitating and when you're not. You can't really fool it. You can't beat the machine, and the suspect finally manages to give two samples. Keep going, and um, bang on, mate. Take a seat. Anything over 40 will render you liable to a prosecution, so we'll see what it comes up with. It mate. might be under 40 now, though. It's all right. Yeah. With his previous disqualification and drink-driving conviction, failing this test could mean jail time. So, what he's telling me is he scored 45 and 43. Let's see. You can go with the lowest one, mate, which is 43, it. but unfortunately you are just over. Does the sergeant know the scores? Sweet. Thank you, mate. Catch you later, Anthony. You're leaving these capable hands here. It's a menace off the road, and the Sarge is left less than impressed. It's unbelievable, really, that people take those risks, especially with children in the car. I mean, as a, as a police officer, it, we see the devastation that it brings when people get beyond their wall when they've been drinking. But I'm a father as well, and I've got children, and there's no way on earth I would ever put my family at that level of risk and get beyond the wheel of a car when I've had some alcohol. He'll be sent to court and he'll be looking at a decent ban. The driver had his day in court. He pleaded guilty to drink driving and was sentenced to 12 weeks behind bars, suspended for 12 months. He was also banned. All right, I let the whole scene play out. I really thought Lisa was going to do something in this scene, but once again, I don't even gotta say it. <laughs> From driving for a total of three years. I don't, it's not her though, it's the show that's doing it. I, I wanna believe, I know she worked hard. I know what it take to get to where she is. You know what I'm saying? I know the train, the hours that she put into this. But at the same time, she don't be doing shite. <laughs> Let the police interceptors Producers tell it she ain't doing nothing. Huh? In this ban, no further action was taken for the other suspected motoring offences. Paul Charlesworth and Lewis Marshall are racing to catch up to a pursuit across town. End of it, turn right. And it's going to come down to us. The suspect car has apparently failed to stop, collided with other vehicles, and ducked into an estate. Yeah, you clear, go. By the time Paul gets them there, another unit stopped the car with a tactical contact and has the driver in cuffs. Try to go with a road in fact, eight coppers are all over him. Coppers are all over him. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look. Everybody doing something. Where's Lisa? It's not me. Y'all want to make it seem like I'm messing with Lisa. Look at the scene. Yeah, 
They need to work out why this bloke apparently failed to stop. And there might be a clue in his man bag. That is the most ground, dangerous driving I've seen for a long, long time. This much wedge arouses Paul's suspicions. So, yeah, it's got to be something drugs related for that sort of passion as he's come out. The lads also wrecked his beamer in a desperate bid to escape. So they're expecting to find something juicy in the car. But it's clean. Nah, he was on his way to the pickup, buddy. Or he dropped off something. Y'all too late or too early. He do got on B-22s and Palm Angel leg sweats on. Time for the million dollar question. What's the what's money for? Sorry. Supreme shirt too. What's the money for? It's prop money. Prop money? Yeah. What's that? What does that mean? Prop money you buy it online, it's fake money. What's fake money? Ah, oh, right. Just to look, look good. Turns out this wedge is as much use as Monopoly money. Let's see what, look, look. what have you got it for then? Look on the front. Just to look flash? Yeah. Oh. Where do, it's it's for the fence. Facebook. Is it's it? for that Make Facebook it. photo. Is that, isn't it? He going to his music video shoot. Yeah. But a car chase is no game, and the information the police have is that the bloke has no licence or insurance. No, it wasn't. There may be 22 of them. This whole chase all around this estate, uh, driving like an idiot, is just because he's got no licence and insurance, which makes... Yeah, he should have definitely just pulled over. That was dumb. Even more stupid, really. Um, because, you know, he's risking people are, people's lives just to save, uh, you know, six points and a £200 fine for having no insurance. And he won't be able to use any of that to pay for it. It happens a lot, more often than it should, just just because I think they like the chase. The suspect was refused charge for the no license and no insurance. He has since failed to. Now that I now that I see he got fake everything like fake money. I know the shirt fake. He got it from Alibaba. Pants fake. Shoes fake. Everything for chain fake. Call for the charge of dangerous. Now he got a warrant out. Driving and is now a wanted man. He want to be involved so bad. It's all well and good buying fake 50s to look flash, but some chances try to pass fake prop money as the real deal. And Ken Tinley and Dan Mottishaw of the Knife Crime Team are hunting for lads who may have done just that. So this is a red Audi S3 that's being in, being linked to a an incident in Hugdall in Nottingham where some individuals have purchased a PlayStation 5 and they've paid for the uh, they paid for the PlayStation 5 and fake notes. Dipped off, he's dipped off. Yeah, he's Has he? Sure there. The suspect's car has been spotted by another unit nearby. We've just spun round. We're going uh, Radford Road towards Bentinck. Might be off to uh, intercept it. Just coming to a stop at the junction of Maple Street. The Audi's pulled over and Ken and Dan are soon on scene. The driver's taken off the questioning as Ken and colleagues deal with the two passengers. Hello, my man. You OK? Uh, How are we doing? All right? It looks like these are the blokes they're looking for. Oh, is that a PlayStation 5? At this point, you've been detained in connection to a fraud because we think that PlayStation that I'm assuming is in that box there has been purchased for fake notes. So what I'm going to be doing in a minute is searching for evidence of that. Okay. I'm telling you, you can't do nothing in the UK, bro. They jammed them. They got them for purchasing a PS5 with fake money. How y'all even find them afterwards? Like, what is... Under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. The back seat passenger. Maybe doing some great investigation work. Ginger is going into cuffs and Ken gets straight to the point. Is that one? All right, lad. Yeah, you happy with that? Yeah, no, all right. Let's be honest with you. You got any fake notes on you? Daff no, like that? No, no, no. I got real. I got my real money. You got, if you look in my pocket. In here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got like fifty quid. Mm -hmm. No real money. Look. It's all real money, is it? Yeah, yeah that's my money, boss. 
Sergeant Matt's on scene, but it's not the PS5 he wants to get his hands on. It's some fake currency. I ain't gonna do anything for that PS5, you hear me? Just trying to work out whether these notes are yeah. fake or genuine. I mean, these ones, they're either very good fakes. I mean, they appear genuine to me. Um, but that's not to say that we won't find some more fake notes or maybe they've used all the fake notes buying the PlayStations. After a thorough search of the vehicle, Matt hits the jackpot. Just under the, uh, under the mat in here. Those ones, I think, are real. These ones clearly aren't. It's more of the fake prop money, but this time in 20s. As you can see. It says prop money on it, doesn't it? They haven't got the transparent panels. They don't even look that good, to be fair. The dodgy notes seem fairly easy to spot. I think what they've done is they've bought, they've um, gone to Gumtree or one of these selling sites and they've gone with a couple of 20s wrapped round a load of fakes, handed them over to the seller, seller's handed over the PlayStation and then it, with, in fairness to the seller, within seconds of them driving off he's realised he's got a load of fake notes <laughs> um, but by then the car's already gone. Thankfully it's come straight our way. God, they, so they found them out of luck. It's a nice little stop. It's game over as the Toy Money Trio trade PlayStation for Police Station and head for the Nick. This good result that we managed to catch him coming into the city, got the PlayStation 5 back and got some fraudulent notes. So in terms of a starting point for an investigation, we're in a good place. Back at the station, Dan casts an expert eye over the funny money. To look reasonably okay, but when you look here, there's, it says that this is not legal tender, it is used for motion pictures by the look of it. And then on the back, it's uh, pounds, it's spelt ponds. See what I'm saying? They say it. Motion picture use only. So it's just Same a, as American just prop money. Sure if you buy anything or sell something for cash, make sure you're getting the real notes and actually have a look at them. And uh, it could just be as simple as it actually says on it, it's not a real note. You don't want a bag full of ponds, do you? The driver was dealt with by way of a simple caution for fraud by false representation. No further action was taken know. against the two passengers. The PlayStation 5 was returned to its... Yeah, buddy didn't probably want to press no charges. He's like, give me my stuff back, dude. That's all. Rifle owner. Still to come, Hila. I'm looking to wrap up today with some, 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 some. Show me some Lisa Please be in this last scene. Across the UK, only one woman for every ten men is prosecuted for drug-related crimes. And when it comes to supply, the interceptors rarely come across female dealers. It's usually um, young males that we find deal drugs. But today, knife crime team members Gav Hall and Dan Mottishaw are after that rarest of suspects. We've got some intelligence that there's a particular person that's involved in drug supply in the Nottinghamshire area. Um, so we know what vehicle that person's driving and we're just monitoring the AMPR to see where the vehicle is. AMPR. We're thinking that this lady is likely to be dealing cannabis but then she could be dealing other things, possibly things like MDMA and Xanax. So we're, um, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we uh, get a good result out of it. And Lady Luck smiling today. Another unit has spotted her. Lane two. Looking like he's going to be right towards the tribal of the lines. Gav gets his foot down. Yep. We've uh, got eyeball on you now. Yeah, we've got it. It's uh, left to go up towards the castle. They light up the suspect's car, which has a brake light out. Drug dealers often try to conceal their stash when pulled over, so they're onto her within seconds. Hey, I'm love you, all right? Switch car off for us, Ducky. Just come to actually talk about your light, but I can smell, smell a smell weed. of cannabis. I'm just going to be detained. Yeah. 
was he? Yeah. All right. Forrest, up. You're going to be detained for the purpose of a search and the misuse of drugs, Zach, for yourself and the vehicle because of the strong smell of cannabis. We got All right, coming right. from it. All right. Just stick it on there for me. She sticks the. She knows she jammed. She's super calm about it. She. Ah, all right. You got me. Mm -hmm. Blame on someone else for the smell of weed, but fesses up to having a small bag of cannabis herself. Give you what I've got, one bag of weed. You got whereabouts is that, my love? In my it's in your hand, is it? All right, just keep hold of it for your hand for one second. All right. Have you got anything else on you? you shouldn't have. No. no. Okay. Anything the vehicle my colleagues need to be aware of? No. No. Sound. All right. Well, chuck us that one bit then. Leaving the rest of the team to search her car, Dan deals with the lady driver. Right. What we'll do is. I'll just do a very cursory search around you, yeah? then I'll get a female officer to come and just give you a bit more pat down. I don't want to stop. Will the female officer be Lisa? Find out. Going up and down your legs and whatnot. All right, all right. Sam. Okay. So anything in your pockets? Nothing's going to hurt me at all. Just, just your phone. All right, my love. Cheers. I'll just... oh. Her pockets are empty. Sand. And it's a similar story with the car. That comes up on my side. I wonder if she's got it on her, mate. Well, the suspect's got something to get off her chest. Yeah, I bought a few bags of peas. Yeah? Where, where are they, then? They're here. OK, all right, Sam. There's more weed. You should have left them in your titty purse. They would have never found them. You tell them on yourself. He didn't hurt bra. OK, all right. Hard. OK. I've been going through. Got a it. It's split up into enough bags to suspect she's dealing. So you've got... Yeah, no, I'd rather you be honest with it. Have you got any more on no, you? Or just, just that's it, is it? All right, OK. I it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that bit in my hand I was just about to put in there. Then I seen the police car and I seen it follow me around. Right, OK. So I got scared, so I hid it straight away there. Dan's an experienced copper who's taser, stinger and pursuit trained. But it's his keen sense of hearing that's come up trumps today. There. Right, right, okay. Have you got some more? Because I think I just heard some more in no, there. No, no, that's just this. That's one out. I can hear it some more. If you've got some more, just. There's no, no, there's no more. I can, like, I can hear something rustling. Honestly, they could do a strip search. Okay, all right, okay, right. Okay. It looks like her wish is going to be granted. She'll go to custody and we'll get some female officers to search her and see if she's got anything else concealed. Car will go back to one of our police stations for a more thorough search and then we'll take it from there. Okay, right, so at this time you're arrested for possession with intense supply of past B drug named. Well said at this time and looked at his watch, like, come on, bro, like that wasn't even necessary. Cannabis, okay. Yeah. Cool, right. Cool. Come on this way, up. She's off for a check-in at the Nick. Where are you here for? Uh Peewitt's cannabis. Yeah. Dan's no Catholic priest, but this lady can't seem to stop her confessions. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, I've got all this. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Just nice, nice class A. There's several bags of what looks like cocaine. At this time, you're further up. Yeah, you're going to jail, buddy. Rest of possession intent supply, class A is right. What we'll do is you're still going to have to have that search anyway. Yeah, okay, no, that's fine. All right. Search me, we're going to find it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No problems at all. She claims that mm, police love. I mean, there's nice no more police. drugs. Well, they've heard it all before. She right. realised she was going to be stripped naked, so I think she's just basically realised that we're going to find it anyway. So if she offers it up now, she probably thinks that she looks a little bit more honest. But we we're going to find it anyway. She wasn't so honest to hand it over at the roadside. The lady strip searched, and would you believe it? More. Yeah. One she missed. One she missed. <laughs> she thought she did say to me. I thought I'd give it yours. <laughs> Bro, thank you very much. It's she do got a lot of titty in there, so you know what I'm saying? She possibly would have missed it. Four deal bags of suspected MDMA to add to the collection. Oh, wow. Okay, so we've got cocaine and MDMA. So, sweet. With the drugs already found, they've now grounds to search her house. We're going to find anything else in there. Indeed, that's it. OK. Oh, some scales that I've got. Yeah. We'll head straight over there now. It's been a good day's work so far. Please with that, man. Please with that. Yeah, well chuffed. But is it about to get even better? Yes. But we've got an authority here to search the house for evidence. 
It's not long before Sergeant Matt finds the promised weed. So, in fairness, I think she said in custody that we'd find a little bit personal use cannabis. That's exactly what we found. I think there's one, two, three, four pre-rolled spliffs and maybe a gram of cannabis. There's nothing else of interest. However, with the drugs found on her person, it's been a perfect result. Is that Pepto Bismol? And Dan's back at his desk to review the haul. So initially, the female offered up this single bag of cannabis, uh, and after speaking to her, she then handed over a, a polythene bag which contained these few deal bags of cannabis. Once she got down to custody, she decided to again to be a little bit more honest this and then we got me, this white powder and these two white rocks from a bag which we potentially believe to be cocaine and then when she was strip searched we had these four bags just here which we again potentially think might be MDMA. The suspect is currently awaiting a charging decision for possession with intent to supply class A and B drugs. Hey man, hey, listen. I just hope to see Lisa one day put in some, you know what I'm saying? I'm gone.